The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 830 a.m. Tuesday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. We got a mixed market to start things off. We get some retail earnings this morning. Walmart crushing it out of the park and trading higher right now in the indices. We got the Dow futures negative by 68 points, 24,439 S&P negative by about 10, trading at 29 37. We had been dramatically higher overnight before pulling back. NASDAQ futures up 1.9326, 9326. Oil up about 57 cents at 32.39. And as we get into gold, gold right now up about a dollar to 17.35 in silver, negative two pennies at 17.44, looking at a 10 year yield of 0.73%. That's up from about 0.60% just on Friday. We'll start things off. Let's jump over to the charts. We'll start it off with the Dow. All the markets at highs between about 2 and 3 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. You have the Dow up there about 300 points higher than where we're trading at right now. Dow is at 24,738, currently trading 24,446. NASDAQ 100, we were up above 9,400 at one point, currently trading 93.29. There's your S&P 500. S&P is reaching a high of 29.75. I mean, you're talking about quite an acceleration. Doesn't look like it on this chart just because of the swings we've been having. But man, oh man, you get up there 29.75 at 245. And by the time you're at 430, an hour and 45 minutes later, you're at 29.32. Again, you're talking about, what is that, 43 S&P points in the span of about an hour and a half last night. We've been just hanging around at those levels since about 4 a.m. Eastern time. Crude oil with some volatility almost made it to $33 again at 7 last night. Reached a low approaching $31 at $31.15. Currently right near $32 at $31.89. There's your gold contract. We had the sell-off yesterday, and we've just been hanging out at these price levels since about 11 a.m. Eastern time yesterday morning. You see gold with the lower bound at about $17.30, the upper bound at about $17.40, and gold right in the middle at $17.35. And the Euro-US dollar, quite a day yesterday, extending those gains. I mean, you had the Euro at 108 to the dollar and we made it all the way up to almost 110 folks at 7 a.m this morning currently trading at 109.45 in terms of earnings maybe the biggest of them all amazon the biggest of them all i always look for but how about walmart walmart crushing it out of the park walmart walmart's e-commerce sales grew by 74 percent and its same store sales jumped by 10 percent do you hear that same store sales for a company like walmart jumped 10 percent in the first quarter they withdrew their financial outlook for the year saying the coronavirus pandemic has created unprecedented variability the company hired 200,000 additional employees to clean stores stock shelves and fulfill online orders during the pandemic and to get into it they're going to be phasing out jet.com they bought that Point three billion in 2016, but they've been phasing that company's technology into the online growth of Walmart.com, uh, and just a huge number. And there it is: earnings per share, dollar eighteen adjusted revenue, 134 billion dollars in 90 days. Not bad, right? Net income, almost four billion dollars, 3.99 billion. That's with hiring, right? 200,000 workers, um, but just crushing it out of the park. Analysts were expecting $1.12, they made $1.18. Total revenue, total revenue grew 8.6% to $134 billion from $123 billion a year prior. I mean, they added almost $11 billion in that 90-day period just versus what they did in 2019. You see the e-commerce sales growth. Things had waned a bit, obviously spiking higher, 74%. Same-store sales just out of the park, 10% annual growth, huge numbers there.
for Walmart. One of the things they were talking about is that they're selling a lot more of low margin items, right? Toilet paper, household items, et cetera. So maybe pressing on their margins a bit, but guess what? That don't matter. Up to one thirty-three ninety-one. You're talking about more than six dollars higher at one point. We've given back some. You still have Walmart trading up more than four dollars pre-market at one thirty-one seventy-five. That's transitioning over to Target as well. You see that those shares trading higher at one twenty-eight ten. Currently trading at one twenty-seven oh six. No earnings yet for Target. I believe they're out later this week as well. But why not? We'll jump to this story since it's hitting at 8.30. Love doing the program at 8.30. We get a lot of economic numbers. U.S. housing starts dropped to 891,000 in April. Number they were looking for was 927,000. That number just hitting a month earlier, you were at 1.216 million. Keeping with the earnings, how about Home Depot? That's a big one as well. Home Depot sales rise 7%, but higher coronavirus-related costs drag down earnings. That's a similar story to what we saw with Amazon, right? Beat on revenue, the earnings front in terms of what they're going to spend. Um, similar deal with Home Depot. Sales were stronger than expected. Sales at stores open at least 12 months. Same store sales as they call it, 6.4%. Quite a number for Home Depot. Home Depot net income fell 10.7% to 2.25 billion or 208 a share compared to 2.51 billion a year ago. I mean that's not that bad, man. They they made a they made 2.25 billion a year ago. They made 2. Point, um, no, excuse me. They made 2.25 billion this year in that quarter and they made 2.5 billion last year. With everything going on, growing the sales they did, revenue for the quarter rose 7.1% to 28.26 billion from 26.38 a year ago. Home Depot shares on that news. You see the spike initially on the earnings worry, down all the way to 232, but the market regaining some composure. We're now down only about $3 from 245. You got a bid ask right above 242 on Home Depot. Kohl's uh, with their earnings as well. We'll jump to the numbers, but there's their stock pretty pretty uh, close to where they closed yesterday. You see the volatility on the earnings. That number coming in at a dollar 65 loss for, uh, excuse me, $3.20 loss, big loss. We'll get into the numbers versus $1.65. The trade's up to $19.79, but just like that, we're pretty much back to where we were. Kohl's, the next article I had ready up there. So you have Kohl's, tanks, sales tank almost 44%. This is where it gets remarkable, right? You have a company like Walmart, same store sales 10%. Home Depot, same store sales 6.4%. Kohl's, sales decrease 44%. Percent. Now, the company said it's not reporting same store sales results due to a lot of their stores being closed, actually. Um, there's the numbers earnings at 320. They were looking for a uh, buck 65 or something like that. Net sales fell to 2.16 billion. They almost had sales of 4 billion a year ago. And here's the key here for Kohl's, which I, I think they're not even getting punished as, as harshly as they probably should be. The retailer reported a net loss of 541 million or 350 a share compared to making 60 million a year ago. But in terms of how much cash they have on hand, the company ended the quarter with 2 billion in cash and 500 million in uh, its revolving credit facility. Their gross margins during the period fell to 17%. So you have sales decreasing dramatically. You have a loss of 541 million for the quarter. They only have 2 billion in cash. If you're losing 541 million in 90 days, you better stem that loss quickly as things rebound. But Kohl's pretty muted, almost flat opening on the open. Stay tuned folks, lots of more action to cover as we come back from the break. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento is hosting a special event Thursday, May 21st from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Trade What You See, a live trading event. For the first time in over 10 years, Larry will host a live event where you'll watch over his shoulder as he trades the markets live. You'll see how he organizes his trading day, the times most likely to generate a signal, what outside information he ignores, and more importantly, what he does not ignore, and much more. Larry will trade the markets in real time, including the Euro US dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, the Dow, and E-mini S&P, crude oil, 
gold, treasury bonds, wheat, and soybeans, and more. When you sign up, you get a month of his daily newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7 included. For all the details on Larry Pesavento's live trading event on Thursday, May 21st, and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P is negative by about eight, NASDAQ 100 positive by eight, and the Dow negative by 46 points right now. Dow trading 24,461. The S&P is sitting right at 2,940. Interesting enough, you put the S&Ps on the daily, you back it up to where we were in terms of the highs on February 20th of 3,397. For some context on Fibonacci numbers here in terms of where we are in the bounce back in the S&Ps, down to a low of 2174, I mean, remarkable, 3400 to below 2200. And as you can see, we're now above the 618. We were flirting with that number. Basically, we touched that number back in late April. We climbed into above the 50% range for the first time as recent as far back as April 9th. Remarkable, right? That we clawed back 50% of the losses by April 9th, and we're approaching six weeks after that date. We're at 2941 though, the 618 was about 2930. Jumping from Fibonacci right to the king of Fibonacci's, Larry Pesavento, he's gonna be in there two days from right now, folks, check it out. Uh, should be a great webinar, live trading event all day from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. Larry's gonna be in there from nine till noon. He'll take a break for lunch, one till four, trading the market live, going over how he looks at the market, watching over his shoulder, how he organizes the day, when he's trading, what he's looking for, what he ignores, what he does not ignore. ignore. Um, and then he goes over everything that he's calculating in there for those trades and factoring into decisions that he's looking at, whether it's currencies, whether it's the indices, Dow, E-mini S&P, commodities, crude oil, gold, whatever it is, folks, if it's got a charting pattern, Larry Pesavento probably trades it. Uh, should be a great event. Two days from right now, check it out. You also gain a month of Fibonacci 24-7. That's a $100 value. Price to attend, $395, and that will be archived. You'll be able to watch that as many times as you'd like. Six hours of trading should be an exciting day in there. And uh, we're coming into Monday, 
we get a holiday. So Thursday should be a good day of action before things calm down on Friday. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. Get in there with Larry Pezzavento. Jumping back to equities with action, Moderna. So Moderna was huge yesterday, of course. The vaccine news hitting the market at 7.30 a.m., accelerating the indices to even higher prices than they were already coming in at. And what does Moderna decide to do? You know it. We're going to sell some shares with all this acceleration. We're going to raise $1.34 billion. So they price this. There we go. 17.6 million shares at $76 each. That was about a 5% discount to where the stock closed at yesterday. MRNA. I mean, there's, I mean, look at that, right? You, you begin at about 20 bucks back in late February, and it's been a one way trip, basically. We've had some retracements, but the real pop yesterday on the news of one of the first phases of their vaccine trial. And to zoom in closer, there's the pop on their news at 7.30 in the morning. There's the trading day. And I'm guessing this is when the news hits that they are going to do a secondary offering down to $76. You see it trading off about $4, almost at that $76 price point. They're gonna be using these funds to facilitate uh, the production and um, the effort to develop that vaccine. So they're raising money, then pulling back in a bit. In terms of what else we have going on, I'm always talking about Disney. They've had some volatility recently. Probably not the news you want to hear as a Disney uh, owner or shareholder or bull, though, as they lose one of their top guys. TikTok nabs Disney's streaming boss. Streaming seems to be the future for Disney. But guess what? This guy was in line to potentially be the CEO and replace Iger. He didn't get that job and he is out of there. So TikTok nabs Disney's streaming boss to be its new CEO. Kevin Mayer said to be TikTok's chief executive. TikTok, um, pretty big app out there. It's a Chinese app, big with the kids, short. What are they, I don't know how many seconds it is, whether it's 10, 20 second video clips, media-esque uh, app. But very, very popular with younger kids. Mayer earned a reputation as one of Disney's best deal makers and worked on company acquisitions. This is quite a list of Pixar, Lucasfilm, Marvel, and online video company BAMTA. I mean, you can't go bigger than that, right? So he was widely considered one of the top candidates to replace Iger, who stepped down in February as the CEO of Disney. Disney's former head of parks, Bob Chapek, succeeded Iger as CEO. A lot of talk when that happened saying um, parks are not the future of this company and you're putting the guy in front of in charge of parks. But guess what? I'm sure uh, hopefully they're all brilliant men at that level of the, the, the executive offices, the, the C the C suites in Disney. So Kevin Mayer set to become TikTok's chief executive TikTok announced on Monday. So the way it works actually he will serve as the chief operating officer of ByteDance, the Chinese company that owns TikTok, effective June 1st. So to see how Disney was reacting to that a bit, Disney shares quite a couple days. I mean, you're talking about Disney. We talked about it on the show yesterday with Tom at 10 o'clock. You went from under 100 to almost 120. You were up 20% just from Thursday morning to Monday morning. Now, some of those have paired a bit actually see the drop that was on the news that they were losing their streaming boss. We went from almost 117 down to a spike low of 114.39. We're up more than a dollar from that level right now, but there you see it. What else we got happening, folks? Check out our YouTube channel. Want to say a hello? I see we got uh, Matt Cooper in there, Pat Stone, our man Earl Warren in there. Um, straight up Hemi, maybe? So uh, check it out, folks. We're always watching the YouTube comments. We appreciate, every, appreciate everybody talking in there, fielding questions. We have a nice group of people interacting all day, trading the markets. and want to give a shout out to them on the YouTube comments. And you can always just either head to YouTube, search TFNN Live, subscribe to our channel. You get all the updates immediately. And you can always watch everything we do in terms of archive programs are available over there as well. So check it out. In terms of other headlines we have going on, stocks making moves. Southwest Airlines, in an SEC filing, the airline said its May operating revenue down 85 to 90 percent from a year ago, with June operating revenue down 80 to 85. I think what might be giving a little pop, though, it's seeing a modest improvement in passenger demand and bookings. Pretty remarkable. You can come up with these types of statistics, but you add this last sentence in there and check out what that does to your shares, folks. How about you trade dramatically higher from 27 to 28.25 on Southwest shares, telling the world that they're gonna be dropping 80 to 
for May and June. But if things are starting to come back, maybe that's all the market needed to hear because guess what? For some context, that's an acceleration. We're gonna open at 28, we're down from 58 on Love Shares. JC Penny, so JC Penny going BK, and who's gonna maybe pick them up? How about Amazon? It's said to be eyeing all or part of the bankrupt retailer, according to a Women's Wear Daily report. Not sure the of that, but either way, pretty remarkable, interesting nonetheless. Baidu reported better than expected earnings and revenue for the quarter, while the Chinese search engine giant also gave an upbeat current quarter revenue forecast as China-based businesses reopen after strict lockdowns. Baidu, B-I-D-U, quite a pop for those shares this morning. We're going to open now. Check up. Oh, what happened there? Oh, I lost something. Hold on. Let me let me get this back up there. My my screen's reacting a little bit. We're going to pull this over here. Not sure what that was. That was a little. Let's pull this guy back. I'll pull it up after the break, maybe. Maybe I'll get it up before. Baidu trading dramatically higher. There we go, to about 117 today on their earnings numbers from 90 last Thursday. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back to finish up the program, wrap things up. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. Markets pretty much where they were when we started the program. S&P is negative by six. You got the Nasdaq positive by 10. Dow negative by 24. So edging up a bit on the Dow. Boeing, quite a day yesterday for Boeing, charging from about 120 to a high of 137. Check out that move from even 113.89. You had Delta talking about to pull up their shares. Delta will pull their headline, but talking about that they're gonna remain at 60% capacity through July in the cabin, 50% in first class. From 2186 up to 2285, we're at 1751 last week on Delta. Let me just make sure my chart. We'll get that up. And a couple other headlines I wanna cover before the day. Advanced Auto Parts earned 91 cents a share. They missed a dollar 73. Revenue also below forecast. Comp store sales falling greater than expected, 9.3%. But talk about a low bar on earnings, folks, because check out this chart. Advanced Auto Parts trading from 130 up to 141 on that news. T-Mobile in the news as well as SoftBank gonna be exiting their position. T-Mobile trading from 102 down to 98.51 on that news. And I wanted to get T-Mobile news, Japan SoftBank exiting. And we also had Delta. So Delta's gonna keep their jets no more than 60% full through at least July. Delta had said yesterday they would cap its first class at 50%, made cabin at 60%. First class probably at 50 because there's two seats to every aisle. Whereas on coach, you're able to put two people with a middle seat and square that. So greater capacity while maintaining some social distancing. And Carvana, they're gonna announce a 5 million share offering. CVNA trading lower on that news, as you can expect, from 98 down to about 92. Stay tuned, folks. We got a man, Larry Pesavento, coming up live with Trade What You See. And don't forget, folks, two days from right now, check it out. Uh, quite a special event. Ten years more than that, Larry has not done a live trading event. He'll be in there 48 hours from right now. So check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. That will be archived. You can watch it as many times as you like as you're in there. Watch, put it over his shoulder as he trades live. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up next. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with our man Basil Chapman filling in. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.